Hello guys and welcome back to Easy Stat Tutorial with Danny D and uh, if you're new to the channel please subscribe and hit on the notification bell so you're notified when you drop another video. Um, without further ado let's get into today's video. So in today's video we'll be doing analysis of variance. So analysis of variance uh, is study unit 4 and this is part 1 of the video. Now what is analysis of variance? Analysis of variance is basically comparing the population mean of more than two populations. You remember in 33 we did one and two populations. So now in ANOVA we're doing more than two populations. So I will be comparing the mean within the groups and the mean amongst the groups as well. And uh, let's go and do some practical examples. Okay guys, so um, analysis of variance, like I said, it uh, tests the group means of more than two populations. In study unit one, we did. I mean, in study three, we did one population, and also did two populations. So now we'll be doing uh, more than two populations. So now let's take a practical example and say that we want to test if different study methods have an impact on student statistics test score. Right, so this is the information that we have, and then we test this by using three different study methods. The first study method for group A is students study with recorded videos, like this one basically. I make a video, and I upload on YouTube, and then you guys watch that video. And then group two, the students attend live tutoring sessions. We meet on campus, we engage on one-on-one -on -one sessions, and then uh, after that, uh, the students will be re uh, will be writing the test as well. Group C, the students uh, do self-study with their notes, with their uh, textbook, their slides, and all that. So now, after that, what we do is we take 15 students. We take 15 students, meaning that we're taking five from each group. Ne? We take five from each group, we give them a test, they write that test, and then after writing the test, um, then we check, we make some calculations, which I'm going to show you guys now, to test if the group means are the same or they are different. Now, they will ask you to write the null and alternative hypothesis as always. So when you write the null hypothesis, you know that it's denoted by H0 and the alternative hypothesis is denoted by HA. You should know this by now. The null hypothesis for this can be written either in weights or using the, the, the uh, how we denote uh, our group means. Like you can see, U1 is equal to U2 is equal to mean number 3. Basically, this means that we say that whether the students are studying with recorded videos or they are studying, they are attending live tutoring sessions or they are doing self-study with their notes, the test marks average will be the same. This is what we actually say. Now, the alternative, I want you guys to write it in words and say at least one is different. At least, at least one group mean is different at least one group mean is different i want you guys to write this in words like this the reason why we say at least one is different and not saying uh and not saying let's say uh u1 is not equal to u2 is not equal to u3 this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong we're not saying this why because it's possible that you might find that group one and group 3 are the same, but group 2 is not the same as them. Or you might find that group 1 and group 2 are the same, group 3 is not the same as them. So now we say at least one is different because we don't know which one at this point. We will know that when you do two case group wise comparison test in part 2 of the study unit. Now, here we're just saying at least one is different from the rest, and we leave it at that. That is how you write your null and your alternative hypothesis, and then you're going to get yourself a mark or two, or two marks if. Uh, the examiner is being generous. So that is how you write your null and your alternative hypothesis. Now we're going to test that null and that alternative hypothesis. And how do we do that? We do that by completing the ANOVA table. We'll ask you guys to complete the ANOVA table. ANOVA table is something that looks like this. Now, in this table, it might look like there's a lot of formulas and uh, uh, you might be confused here and there, but I'm going to break down it, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to break it down for you. Now here, we have the source of variation, whereby we have amongst groups, within groups in the total. We have the, uh, we have the degrees of freedom, sum of squares, mean sum of squares, 
the f value and the p value now we'll get to explaining this after what is more important in this group is the sstr and sse so sstr is basically the sum of squares uh, among the groups we are comparing the groups with each other the mean of those groups within each other and then we add them because sum means adding however they won't ask you to do that they won't ask you to do some complex uh, calculations at this point they'll give you one of these values here all you just have to know is these values basically uh, all these values here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 they are all connected to each other the p value is always given just like in 73 it's always given so these ones are more they are, they are always connected to each other and you can use one to calculate the other but then we, the, the main one that we need is the sum of squares so we need one of this the sum of squares or the sse in most cases for us to get the others now g minus one so to get this one you don't need the others to get this one you don't need the others and to get this one you don't need the others so here you're going to say the number of groups minus one here is the number of observations the total minus the number of groups here is the number of observations minus one or you can either you can also say this plus this is equal to this we'll do that in a practical that we're doing just now so that you can understand even more sstr like i said is the sum of squares is calculated and that is why it's just written sstr that's just written sse there's no formula for this here hence i'm saying they won't ask you to do it ssto is the total it's just this plus this to get this like i said we'll do that uh, in a short period of time now here to get this you take the sstr you divide the g minus one which is the degrees of freedom for among groups like it says the sstr which is this and then you divide by this and then you get this value here for this one you take this you divide by this and then you get this one you take this one which is mstr divided by mse you get the f value the p value is always given like i said so now let's do something that is uh practical in the uh example that we just did they gave us the sum of squares which means uh from the five uh, students from each group that we took uh they written the test and then we took the test uh, marks we did some calculations for the sum of squares and these are the numbers that we got now we're going to do some calculations to fill in all the remaining parts of this uh table now this table i said is the number of groups minus one how many groups do we have we have three groups how many groups do we have uh we have three groups we have three groups uh sorry uh we have three groups we have three groups three groups three minus one is equal to two so remember n is equal to 15 the number of observations is 15 and then the number of groups 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 is equal to uh three because it's the ones that are watching the videos the ones that are attending uh and the ones that are self-study so now to get this value here, like I said, it's 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. Let me actually write it here. This one is going to be uh, equal to 3 minus 1, which is the number of groups minus 1, hence the formula set, and that is equal to 2. The value is equal to 2. Let me actually take this graph and put it here so that you guys can see the formulas as well as we do them here together. Now... To get this one, we said 3 minus 1 equals to 2. And then here they say the n total, which is the number of observations, minus the number of groups. How many observations we have? We have 15 observations. The number of groups, we have 3 groups. So meaning this one over here, this one over here is going to be equal to uh, 15 minus 3 groups. And that is equal to uh, 15 minus 3 is 12. 15 minus 3 is 12. I'm going to need my calculator, so I'm going to put it there. So that is how we find that value over here. It's equal to 12. Now, the total of this is just 2 plus 14. I mean, 2 plus 12 to be equal to 14. So you can either do that, or you can say the end total, which is 15 minus 1. 15 minus 1 is 14. 15 minus 1 equals 14. You can also say, 2 which is this one plus 12 because it's the total of the 2 2 plus 12 which is also equals to 14 so either way you want to do it however i'm going to do it the way they written it here i'm going to say this is 
it is equal to this is equal to uh, 15 minus 1 which is equal to 14 which is equal to 14 that is how you get the first three. So meaning that if you have the number of observations and the number of groups, you don't need the other values to actually get this. You can literally get this without using the others. Cool. Now, to get the SSTO, which is the sum of squares, the total sum of squares, to get that, you take this value and you add this value. As the total this plus this. So you're going to say 1409. 0.7 plus 146.0 which is equals to 155.7 so this here this here we say it's equal to 1409.7 plus 146.0 and that is equal to 1 155.7 that's the value right 155.7 that's how you find this value now to get this value here the mstr to get the mstr you take 1407 you divide this sstr which is this divided by the degrees of freedom uh for a month group which is g minus one so to get this this one here you see you see uh this is equal to 1409.7 minus i mean divide by 2 uh divide by 2 and that is equal to let's just do it and see 1407 divided by 2 and that is equal to 704.85 that is equal to 704 Point eighty-five. That is the value of the sum of squares among group. Among groups. So the sum of squares within groups, it's one forty-six is equal to one forty-six point zero divided by twelve, and that is equal to one forty-six point zero. Uh, divide by 12 divide by 12 that is 12.167 let's round off to one decimal here so it's going to be 12.2 equals to 12.2 so remember that will tell you how many uh, decimals to round off to so you should have round off to those decimals uh, which means this is 0 0.9 ne? Which means this is uh, 704.9. Let's run off to one decimal. So now here, we're going to say 704.9 divided by 12.2 to get the value of F. 704.9 to get the value of F. 704.9. 704.9. 704.9 divided by... 12.2 divided by 12.2 and the answer is 57.79 so the value of f is 57.78 i mean 57.78 this is equal to 704.9 divided by 12.2 and that is equal to 57.78 57.78 that is how you calculate it and the p-value will be given to you the p-value will be given to you let me actually write this in brackets to say that it will be given to you so you don't have to calculate the p-value they'll give it to you and then they'll ask you to make a decision and draw conclusions so now let's say the p-value given here was 0.0.00, .00 Zero five. Let's say the p value was zero point zero 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 five. Now, that is how you complete this uh, table. However, 
um it won't be as easy as i just explained it here they will try to trick you by not giving you some of the values here let's say maybe in this case i got it was these two values that were given and we had to calculate the others just remember that all these values interact with each other let's say sometimes maybe you don't have this value and you also don't have uh let's say this value let's say you don't have this one you don't have this one then they ask you to calculate this one so for you to calculate this one you must know that you have to find this one first for you to get this one you must get this one so that you say this divided by this to get that so meaning you have this one and then from this one you take this you divide this you get this before you can take this to divide this to get the value that you want so always remember that they go hand in hand you will see this uh when you do some uh practical question papers or the previous question papers that you guys uh, have on your ifundi or uh, at the library site now from this they will tell you that okay given the p-value is equal to 0 0.0005 at five percent significance level what conclusion can you draw from this now what you're going to do is you're going to write down your alpha is equal to 0 0.05 again they said at five percent 0 0.05 and now the p-value is 0 0.0005 that tells you that the p-value is less than alpha the p-value is less than alpha what do you do when the p-value is less than alpha you reject the null hypothesis you re you reject the null hypothesis hypothesis you know this by now we've done it several times with a hypothesis testing you reject the, the null hypothesis. And what did the null hypothesis say? The null hypothesis was saying that they are equal. So your condition is going to say at least one study method has a different. Let me just write it down. You're going to say, uh, you're going to say, you're going to say at least, at least one study method has a different impact on the marks of students at least one study method has a different impact on the marks of students so we don't know which one is different which one is not different from the other so at this point this is how we make a decision p value is less than alpha reject the null hypothesis and the conclusion is at least one study method has a different impact on the marks of students and that is analysis of variance part one so for part two we'll be uh doing some ANOVA assumptions and then we'll also be uh testing for the two keys group wise comparison test whereby we'll be comparing the means to see which ones are actually different and which ones are the same and for now i'll see you guys in the next video take care